Hello, everybody. This is Pastor Mark Stewart from the Mission Hill Baptist Church in Hayesville, North Carolina. I want to talk to you a little bit today about uh, our spiritual relationships, our spiritual relationships. I, I begin to think about uh, people in the situation that we're in now, especially God's people. Uh, and there are those that uh, may even say that they're God's people um, and are not. But I, I've thought of everything in light of the church uh, right now with all the coronavirus going around. Churches are not able uh, to come together the way that they uh, would like to. Uh, and that's the whole thing that makes us a church. The church is the ecclesia, it's the called out assembly. Uh, those children of God that assemble together. And so being able to assemble together, that's what makes us uh, the church, the church of Jesus Christ, the church of God. I've wondered, uh, not in a critical way, but in a, in a, a very sorrowful way, uh, my heart aches because I wonder how many people are faring pretty well not having to assemble, not getting to assemble. Right now, I miss the church. I miss God's people. I miss being able to go to the house of the Lord uh, with, with my brothers and my sisters in Christ. We have that spiritual bond, that spiritual relationship we're brothers and sisters in Christ. I wonder how many people are doing well, uh, not going, not really missing it, not missing the people. Uh, sometimes you can maybe uh, miss those that are you're familiar with, but there's a love between God's people and a union, a unity that you can't find anywhere else. And I, I'm very much, I know uh, several men of God that I've talked to that uh, were almost in tears saying how much they missed their church, how much they missed their people and missed the being able to gather together. And so I want to read you some scriptures about uh, the uh, spiritual relationships again that we have, who we are. The Bible says that uh, uh, in Romans chapter number eight, that we're heirs together. We'll be glorified together. He said in Ephesians chapter two that we were fellow citizens, fellow citizens, and we are of the household of God. Think about that. We are fellow citizens of heaven. We are that are saved are of the household of God. And he tells us in Ephesians that we are a part of the whole family. He said, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. The whole family. And uh, the Lord, when he was uh, talking uh, in Hebrews, he said, he is not ashamed to call them brethren. We are brethren uh, with our Lord. We're no more servants, he said, but we are a son in the book of Galatians. I've been made a son of God. Now are we the sons of God, he says, the sons of God. We are lights in the world, he says, in the book of Philippians, lights in the world. Right now, you and I should be lights in the world. We should have always been lights in the world, but especially now when things seem to be getting uh, spiritually darker, we should let our lights so shine before men. They should see that even though uh, our doors may be shut, that the church of God is still very much alive, that God's people are different we are different. Uh, we have a heavenly father. We are sons and daughters of God. Uh, we are the sons of light. He said for us to walk as children of light. You think of all the scriptures that the Bible talks about the children of God. 
He says, we are the children of the resurrection. The children of the resurrection. And uh, uh, us who are justified by his grace, heirs of salvation, heirs of salvation. So many titles, so many uh, names uh, in our relationship, not only between us and our heavenly father, us and our Lord Jesus Christ, us and the Holy Spirit, but between one another, brothers and sisters in Christ, children of God, heirs and joint heirs, the sons of God without rebuke, the children of light in this dark world. I hope this encourages you today. I hope you are missing the house of God. Maybe the Lord will let us gather before too much longer and we can go back in the house of the Lord and be able to appreciate uh, the verses that we've quoted so many times, like David, uh, that uh, I'd rather have one day in the house of God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. I'd rather be a doorkeeper at the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Uh, think of all those scriptures, how we're to rejoice. Maybe we will rejoice more when we enter into his courts and into his uh, gates with praise and with thanksgiving. How that we need to praise our Lord for the church, uh, for God's people. I miss the building that is dedicated as the sanctuary of the church of God. I do miss the building. I miss the inside. I get to go to the inside. I've preached inside uh, since then, but our people are not there. And it's just not quite the same without God's people being there. We're doing everything we can right now uh, to try to stay connected with our people. Pastors everywhere trying to be a help to God's people, the people that they're shepherding, the people that the Lord tells us to feed the church of God which he has purchased with his own blood. This blood-bought crowd of believers that we call the church of God, the people of God, the saints of God, our brothers and sisters in Christ. We love them and we miss them. And uh, Lord willing, we will soon be able to gather again at the house of God. Don't take your spiritual relationships for granted if you're not missing God's people in God's house. I pray that you would see that you have been missing something truly on the inside. It is how we know that we've been saved and been born again, that we have that love for one another. That's how the world knows that we are the disciples of Jesus Christ is when they can see that we have love for the people of God. So I hope today the love of God in your heart is real and the love for God's people is real. And I hope you're missing God's people and God's church as much as I am. May the Lord bless you richly today.